This House is being treated in a manner which is clearly inconsistent with clear promises already made. She has shown a tin ear if she thought for one moment that these changes wouldn't arouse interest in the House of Commons. Secretary of State, what on earth are you playing at? Yesterday, we tabled an amendment to the retained EU law bill that amends the operation of the sunset in clause one of the bill. This is a technical change. It introduces a schedule to the bill of retained EU law that will be revoked on 31st of December 2023. Under the standing orders of this House, the European Scrutiny Committee is specifically charged with examining the legal and political consequences of EU legislation. It reported on the 21st of July 2022, after a five-month inquiry in support of the bill, and which was passed unamended by a large majority in this elected House and by the Public Bill Committee, all of which endorsed the Government's policy on the bill. The Secretary of State has been asked formally and personally three times to appear in front of the European Scrutiny Committee since February. Why has she failed to do so? The amendments published today, apart from her very short written ministerial statement yesterday and her article in the press today, are not accompanied by any explanation to this House, despite the utter reversal in vital respects of the bill as passed by this elected House. Why not? The amendments have not been subjected to any analysis or questioning by this House, which is now essential, given the, given the fundamental change in government policy. This House is being treated in a manner which is clearly inconsistent with clear promises already made. Will my right honourable friend specifically seek and make arrangements for the immediate deferral of the report staged in the unelected House of Lords, which is due to take place on the 15th and 17th of this month, so that she can come to the European Scrutiny Committee next week and answer our questions as provided for by standing orders and provide a command paper before that report stage to explain the reasons for these fundamental questions of, national, of constitutional importance which are being made and which affect all our constituents, all our voters and the coherence of our statute book and our legal system. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So State. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, the Honourable Gentleman asks uh, many questions. I will endeavour to answer them, although I think he knows that he has heard the answers uh, before. But I'm very happy to, uh, to respond on the floor uh, of the House. We've had many conversations um, in private where uh, we have discussed retained EU law. He has written to me about uh, attending the European Scrutiny Committee, and I replied that until the policy was settled, I could not attend uh, the committee. He claims that it is a he claims that it is a change of policy. It is a change uh, of approach. The policy is still the same. We are ending EU supremacy. We are tending in, uh, we are ending interpretive effects. But what we are changing is how we're doing that. I'm less concerned with process, and I'm quite for pragmatism. But can I say to my right honourable friend, she has shown a tin ear if she thought for one moment that these changes wouldn't arouse interest in the House of Commons and that it needed a UQ to bring her here this morning. But nevertheless, at the end of the day, my key question, I guess, is simply to ask, is she convinced that by this new methodology there will be the same number of laws repealed and in the same amount of time as if the pragmatic change had not been made? Uh, I thank the Honourable Gentleman for his question. The answer is yes. And what I would say is that all the members who had written to me on uh, this issue when, uh, when it was, as soon as I became business secretary, I wrote back to and also engaged with. And the response had been so quiet, it felt very much to me like a technical change, uh, which is what it is. And I'm very happy to explain as much as possible on the floor of the House. But I will emphasise that this is my decision. It was not the Prime Minister's, it was not civil servants. This was me looking at the detail and deciding that this was the best approach, because this is how we will get to that number, but create more time for reform. It's about accelerating, it is about accelerating the process. I don't think anyone in this House can claim that I am not a Brexiteer. I stood here less than a month ago talking about how we had successfully negotiated the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the biggest trade deal that we have ever done for this, um, in this country since we left the EU. This is a benefit of Brexit. I'm very proud to continue to do that. This is the best way for us to deliver more benefits over and over again, rather than spend our time on parliamentary procedure, which doesn't mean that much to the people on the doorstep. The advantage of a sunset is that it provides a sense of urgency. Now there isn't one, is there? 
So stuck. There is still a sunset, and it will end uh, interpretive effects in the supremacy of EU law. The same number of laws we were likely to revoke by the sunset will be uh, in the schedule, because as I said, the process had turned from one where we were reforming to one where we were retaining. I know that that's what the bill literally says, but actually the purpose of it has been subverted because of the approach which was originally taken and which these amendments should um, address. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Will my right hon. Friend explain whether this abdication to the House of Lords has come about because of civil service idleness or a lack of ministerial drive? Show of state. Uh, no, I don't think it has come out of uh, any idleness. If anything, I would say that civil servants have been working feverishly on this, but what they have been doing is preserving not repealing and certainly not getting the reforms that we want. This approach means that they can now do that. And I, and it's, it's, um, I, I know that it is disappointing because it's not what uh, my right honourable friend had wanted. It was not his approach. And I have spoken to him about it and explained my reasoning. I don't think that we will come to agreement on this, but I would like him to still understand that I am doing this because I genuinely think this is the best way to deliver what those of us certainly on this side of the House voted for. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And if I may, well said earlier. <laughs> Having checked the Hansard record... The bill passed second reading in the Commons on the 25th of October last year with a government majority of 56 and not a single Tory MP voted against it. All of us didn't vote for it. No one voted against it, Bob, not even you. (laughs) On the 18th of January this year, it passed third reading with a government majority of 59 and again, not a single Tory MP voted against it. So it had managed to unify the Conservative Parliamentary Party on an admittedly controversial issue. It left this House without a single Tory MP opposing it. Why then, when it's gone to the other place, the House of Lords, has the Government performed a massive climb down in its, on its own bill, despite having such strong support from its own back benches. Secretary of State, what on earth are you playing at? Mr Speaker, I've already explained the reasons why we have changed yeah. the approach, and I'm very, very happy uh, to repeat them for my honourable friend. He should know that I'm not somebody who gets pushed around lightly. The fact is, I went in and looked at the detail, and I decided that this was the best way to deliver it. This was not, and I, I, I will stress again, this was not the Prime Minister's decision. As a Secretary of State, I have to be responsible and look at what we can make sure is deliverable. This is the best way to get him what he wants. It may have been different from what was put on the floor of the House, but if he wants what I want, which is ending EU interpretive effects by the end of this year, ending the supremacy of EU law by the end of this year, I can tell him he is not in the room. He's very welcome to send me the list of things that he wants repealed, but this is the way to get it done. I had the privilege of PPSing this uh, bill as it went through committee stage, so I've seen the complexities, the ideologies on both sides of the argument, and the difficulties that are inherent in trying to get this through. What my constituents and people up and down the country want to know, the vast majority who did vote for Brexit, is what is the message for them who now have concerns this could be renamed? Uh, I have a very strong message for them. You can, uh, the the, uh, the hon. Gentleman can tell his constituents that the Prime Minister is a committed Brexiteer, that the Secretary of State for Business and Trade is a committed Brexiteer, and that we are making sure that we can deliver this on time, but actually show the benefits of Brexit, not just parliamentary procedure and legislative activity. That is not the outcome that is going to deliver for the country. That is the process, and all of this debate has shown that quite often we spend too much time on process and not enough on outcomes. And this is an outcomes-focused government, and that is why I have made this change and why I will deliver for for his constituents.